Welcome to the Ask Brad Show. Be prepared to hear ideas, concepts, and strategies that may challenge the way you were taught to think about saving and investing for retirement. It's time to roll up our sleeves and get to it. And now the host of the Ask Brad Show, here's Brad Williams. I remember when my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer and the doctor told her what he proposed to do. The first thing she did was went and got a second opinion. The second opinion bore out the first, and she went through the procedures. So second opinions can reinforce what you're doing. It can even change what you're doing. So let's talk about second opinions, though, for your investments. Because this retirement that you're building and have built, that's everything you've worked for. So you want to make sure you don't miss anything, that you're on the right track, okay? Because if you don't, it could turn into a financial disaster. And the problem is with retirement is that oftentimes you don't really know it's a financial disaster until it's too late. And that could easily be avoided with a second opinion. Welcome. This is Brad Williams and the Ask Brad Show. And today I got a great show on tap for you because we're going to talk about just that, second opinions. You know, I think probably the biggest thing is getting a second opinion. It's often about loyalty. I know I'm personally going through an issue where I am going to have a knee operation. And, you know, original doctor told me I needed a new knee and I'm getting a second opinion just to make sure. And then I'll make that decision. So when it comes to your money, maybe you've been working with the same broker, the same financial advisor for a long time. You might even consider them a friend. And loyalty is something we don't have enough of in this day and age. But what's important over loyalty, you know, friendship is one thing. But when it comes to your money, that's another. What's the most important thing is getting the best possible advice for you and your family. Now, one issue some people have is procrastination. Some others, it's pride. They do it themselves. You look at it that, hey, I'm my biggest advocate. Nobody else is going to do this for me. But you know what? This is serious business, not about friendships. And the sooner you realize this, the better off you'll be. So on today's show, I'm going to reveal seven reasons why getting an objective second opinion could literally save your retirement. And also, and this is important, the one red flag that's to send you running for the hills and why your advisor may have a bias towards some investments or products. And that may not be in your best interest. It's just common sense. You know, so often we look at second opinions. One of the biggest thing about the internet that I think is brought up is that when people are looking to buy a product, well, they'll check it out here, check it out there, check it out several places. You can get on shop for cars now and never set foot on a car lot. You've got the car facts where you can find out if there's something wrong with it. So when you're doing all this diagnosis, For your purchases, why not do that for your retirement? Why rely on just your opinion or your broker's opinion if you've been working with one for a long time? Sometimes getting a second opinion makes sense. One story I read recently in the paper uh, about an 18-year-old girl, and she got a phone call from the doctor. She was working at a pizza parlor and was told she had a tumor on her ovaries and that she had basically three months to live. But she sought a second opinion, even a third opinion. And today, she's 60 years old and cancer-free. So in her case, getting a second opinion saved her life. According to Gallup, 70 to 85% of people don't seek second opinions about a medical diagnosis. That sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? Because there's an old uh, acronym, PI, anything painful, important, or expensive deserves a second or even a third opinion. So think about that, PI, always remember that. Anything painful, important, or expensive deserves a second or even third opinion. So painful, important, expensive. Well, I would say those pretty much describe your retirement. You know, it could be an expensive lifestyle that's important. I mean, it's your retirement. If you don't get it right, it could be painful. So it's really important to get it right. And I mentioned about getting a second opinion on my knee. 
Let me tell you a story that happened to me back in 1982. I was uh, playing racquetball with a friend, and there was some water on the court, and I was catching one off the back wall and spinning, and my foot hit that little bit of water that was on the court, and it caused me to corkscrew, and I dropped like a rock right there in the middle of the racquetball court. And fortunately, the gentleman I was playing with was a chiropractic student in his final semester of chiropractic college in Atlanta. And he knew exactly what I had done and made sure that the next morning I was at a sports specialist friend of his who helped start to take the pain away. Well, I also, coming from a traditional medical background, sought a second opinion, was told that I needed to get an operation on my back, that I had severely damaged my disc. And that the way to fix it would be an operation. Well, the sports specialist I was working with said, no, you don't need to do that. I can help you through this. And it was painstaking. My buddy would come pick me up at my place every day and carry me on a stretcher to the chiropractor. And that went on for probably about three weeks. I stayed in bed for three weeks. I wore a back brace for about eh, about a month. Then I started exercising again. Now, I want to bring something into perspective. This happened at the beginning of May in 1982. And when I got through the process, something important to me happened that I'd been working on for several years is that I was scheduled to take my first degree black belt test in uh, Delaware that September. Well, I thought that was out. Well, with the work this chiropractor did, got me going. I really focused. And in September, I was there with the rest of them, and I took my test and passed it and got my black belt. So if I had listened to one doctor, I would have gotten an operation. I would still been recovering, and I would still have limited mobility today. So second opinions are important. From your financial standpoint, you got to look at what's the risk of getting a second opinion. Well, there's really no downside risk because you're in control. It's not that when you go see somebody, you have to do business with them, but it could be a way to confirm you're on the right course. I got a great referral from a guy once because his friend had come in and I sat down with him and after going over all his uh, data and where he was, told him he really didn't need my help. He was doing a great job. And lo and behold, about a year later, I get a call from a person saying that he was referred to me by that gentleman. And I'm still working with that other gentleman today. So it's important to get a, a second opinion. Now, key thing that comes up a lot today is your advisor a fiduciary. So what does that mean? Well, are your financial decisions based on an advisor who's driven by commissions? Or are they driven by someone who is working in your interest? Because a fiduciary responsibility is one that is working in your interest. And there's a uh, suitability level and then there's a fiduciary level. A lot of financial salespeople are on the suitability level. They ask you questions to find out whether what they're proposing to you is suitable for you. Not that it's necessarily the best thing for you, only that it's suitable. And a lot of the companies are looking at that and they approve the use of that product or not based on its suitability. What's important is working with someone who is a fiduciary. They're going to act ethically with your best interest at heart. So, When you're fiduciary, you're basically knowingly accepting the fact that you're acting in the best interest of that other person. So when it comes to managing your assets, it's all about making the decisions because they're right for that person, because they're furthering them on that goal. When you're working with typical stockbroker, for example, they're going to have a bias towards stock. And if you sell someone who only sells annuities, well, they're going to have a bias toward insurance products. It doesn't mean any of these products are bad. It just means that, you know, when all you have is a hammer, most things always look like nails. So it's important that they have multiple tools in their tool belt. And so you don't get a second chance on this. Once you set up your retirement and you're going through it, that's it. And you want to make sure you make the right decisions going into it. Now, As I've mentioned on other shows about, you know, me being my financial GPS for my clients, it oftentimes requires subtle course corrections along the way, but we're not talking about major corrections. So if you want to have that conversation with us, 
we'd be happy to look over your shoulder to help you ensure that you're on the right track. And let me show you how you can make the most of every dollar you've saved with your retirement. I make it easy and simple by going through a set process. I believe that a financial advisor should be a financial educator, that you should know the details of what you're getting into and that you should understand why certain things are used. So if that's something that interests you, I can give you no cost analysis, no sales pitch, no products for sale. Just give us a call, 844-343-6048. That's 844-343-6048. At Brad Williams Financial Services, we understand the struggles that families and business owners face today. We want to help you develop, implement, and monitor a strategy that's designed to address your personal objectives and individual situation. To learn more about Brad Williams Financial Services or to set up a complimentary review, call 844-343-6048. That's 844-343-6048. Now, today we're talking about seven reasons why getting an objective second opinion can literally save your retirement. You know, there are five critical elements of retirement planning. And if you're not looking at all five for your own personal retirement, that's a huge flag. That's a huge red flag. When you're working with your advisor, are you discussing Social Security, Medicare, taxes, income, fees, required minimum distributions? Today, I'm going to help you create a comprehensive checklist. And these are things that you need to be talking about to your advisor. So get a pen and paper handy. If you're driving, just give us a call 844-343-6048 and say, send us the checklist you talked about on the five things you need to know about retirement. If you're doing your own planning, this information could be critical for you. What matters most is getting the best advice for you and your family. You know, I do workshops on a regular basis, uh, educational workshops, just done one. And, you know, it's always interesting that everyone comes in with a different story. And that means that everyone has different solutions. It's not a matter of, okay, take this test and see if you're conservative, aggressive, or moderate. And then we're going to put you in this cookie cutter portfolio. No, this is all personally designed, should be personally designed. Not everybody's got the same plan. You know, if you're not having discussions about taxes, Social Security, generating income, health care, talking about long-term care, inflations, required minimum distributions, you know, these are the conversations you need to be having. I think one of the biggest ones is taxes, probably one of the most overlooked areas of investing. And it has a profound impact on your investments and your lifestyle, because just like in your income, it's not what you make, it's what you bring home. So looking at making sure your portfolio, your income plan is tax efficient as possible can save you lots of money. You know, taxes are a massive expense in retirement. Everybody needs to contribute to society, but why contribute more than you're required to? So it's paying what you need to pay and no more. And a lot of people confuse tax preparation with tax planning. They go to a CPA or an accountant or a tax preparer. And they bring in their receipts and then they get their taxes back. They sign them, they send them off and they think, oh, sometime during that process that he's looked at my stuff or she's looked at my stuff and they're going to tell me if they know any changes. Well, let me clue you in on something. In most cases, they don't have time to do that. They're working around the clock during tax season and their objective is to make sure that all the boxes are filled out and everything's checked and that you're paying the right amount of taxes for your situation. They're not really looking at the fact of how can you change this situation. And some of the tax traps to watch out for require minimum distributions that you take once you hit 70 and a half. When you do those with your IRAs, your 401ks, you could pay a tremendous amount of taxes unnecessarily. One thing that, that might help would be a systematic Roth conversion plan. And that way, later on, you're getting tax-free income. The second item could be Social Security. And the way I look at Social Security, at least for people, you know, 55 and up, 
is the backbone of their uh, plan in retirement. That's kind of the foundation. One of the first things I do when I start working with someone is do a Social Security timing report because Social Security is that steady, dependable income, and you need to make sure that you maximize it. But so many people leave tens of thousands of dollars on the table. And that's because claiming benefits is more complicated, more confusing than ever before. You know, there's 2,728 rules in the Social Security handbook. And then there's hundreds of thousands of rules about those 27 to 28 rules. And that's their operating manual system. Forbes magazine reported that as much as $10 billion, and that's billion with a B, in Social Security benefits goes unclaimed every single year. So how and when you claim your Social Security not only impacts you, but it also impacts your surviving spouse. And it could trigger an avalanche of taxes. So there are some strategies that I help my clients with to show them that. And do you know what you pay in taxes to and where your income comes from affects your Medicare premiums? So claiming your Social Security at 62, for example, also changes what your spouse gets when you pass on if you're the primary earner. So again, that's tens of thousands, maybe even 100,000 or more. That's a key thing. Investing in the stock market these days is like riding a roller coaster. Leaving a place of safety, get on the coaster, hear the clickety-clack as you experience anticipation climbing to the top of the hill, followed by sheer panic as you plummet back to the earth, hoping you stay on track. You might be brave enough to repeat the process several times going up and down, but never achieving higher highs and accomplishing nothing but anticipation followed by fear. The stock market has been doing this same ride of volatility with no real growth. Proper education, though, can help you find a better way to grow your money during these times. Call 844-343-6048. That's 844 844- Three four three six zero four eight. Welcome back. You know, we are talking about some planning tools that I help my clients with. We talked about Social Security and taxes. Next is income. You know, retirement's all about income. It's building streams of income. It's not just how much assets you have. It's the income you're getting from. It. Stock markets go up and down. I often show my clients that total return is growth plus income. Are you building your retirement on growth? Or are you building it on income? Because growth can be elusive. Growth can be negative. Look at back at 2000 to 2003, we had nearly a 50% loss and then nearly 60% from 2007 to 2009. Did you get any growth those years? If you were depending on the price of the stocks in your portfolio going up so you could cash them in for your required minimum distributions or your income, you are sacrificing future income from that to do that. So it's having an income plan. Okay. Now, a lot of times when you hear these buzzwords on the radio or whatever about income, a lot of times they're talking about buying an annuity with an income rider. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay. That, that has a place, but not for everybody, but That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about using income tools to build steady, dependable income. Okay. So to get that income, you're going to have to make your money last. You know, we're living longer, which is great, but that means you got to make your money live longer too. So good way to look at it's a mortgage. You know, if you've got a 30 year mortgage, when you make your first payment, most of it is interest and a little of its principal. And so as you go through the 30 years, the next thing you know, you get to the end of it and the mortgage is paid off. Okay. So when you get into retirement, you know, it actually can work the same way. So most of what I might be getting that first year is interest on my money. But if I'm sacrificing a little principal because maybe the market's down or that's my plan is eating some of the principal, do you realize that it works the same way that in 30 years that thing could be drained? Because the more you take a principal in the early years, the less interest you get in the later years. So when you're thinking about living to your 80s and 90s and you're retiring at 65, 
make sure you have a solid income plan and you're not depending on growth, that you're looking at the total return of your portfolio. And I'm not talking about bond funds because there's some problems in that area too that uh, I've done other shows on. So it's all about steady, dependable income. Then there's health care. People are going to spend upwards of $400,000 potentially for health care costs as they get older. So everybody who lives past 65 is going to need some form of long-term care, whether it's home care from their family or whether it's actual official, you know, in a nursing home or assisted living. And those can get real expensive. The next area is inflation. You got to plan for that. So it's real important that you take care of taxes, that you take care of Social Security, make the right choices in Social Security, have a right income plan, have health care taken care of. And then there's inflation because you've got to plan for inflation because that will eat up your retirement. I remember when I was in high school, I worked at a theater. An adult could get into a movie at the theater I worked at for a buck seventy five. What's the movie pass now? Like twelve bucks. Okay. So that's inflation. A dollar in nineteen fifty has the same purchasing power as ten twenty three today. So with the way they print money, with the way the Federal Reserve works, it allows the government to pay back the debts they accrue with cheaper dollars. Unfortunately, it's a hidden tax to you. So keep that in mind. So as we look at all these things, this overwhelms a lot of people. You know, it's complicated and there's a lot of details to it. And that's why a second opinion is so critical because what I'll do in that second opinion is help you focus on these five critical pillars to make sure you get everything you can out of every dollar you have in retirement. That you're looking at investing as you move into retirement looking at more investing for income than from growth. And I outline those reasons why. So if having a second opinion makes sense to you, give me a call. 844-343-6048. Be happy to give you a free one-hour consultation. That's 844-343-6048. And that way you can make sure you're on track. I think it's worth an hour of your time, and it'll be worth an hour of mine. At Brad Williams Financial Services, our goal is to develop enduring, long-term personal relationships with our clients, knowing that you have placed your trust in our expertise and dedication. To learn more about Brad Williams Financial Services or to set up a complimentary review, call 844-343-6048. That's 844 844- Three four three six zero four eight. And we've been talking today about why a second opinion can be critically important for your retirement plan. It can help you figure out whether you're on the right track. Uh, you might see some gaps. Uh, you might find out that the financial products you're in are, re- are fairly limited to certain segments. That's why we're talking about the seven reasons why getting a second opinion is so important. One big issue that I hear from a lot of folks as they start working with me is one of the reasons they came over is they didn't have a whole lot of communication with their advisor. One question I'd ask you is when's the last time you heard from your advisor? When's the last time you ever went over your investment details with them? Did they explain their strategy long-term and short-term? Did they talk about your strategy and how you can avoid unnecessarily taxes, fees, and penalties. Have you talked about required minimum distribution? These are the topics of conversation you need to be having with them. Updating the plans a must. In one of my shows, I talked about how planes are off course most of the time, and that GPS brings them right back on track. Well, that's what a financial advisor should do, is those subtle course corrections along the way, not the big ones. You know, when the market's going down the last few weeks, has been rocky for a lot of people. Frankly, I haven't gotten a lot of phone calls. I I send out information on a regular basis because my clients know what their strategy is. We meet on a regular basis. They understand about these things and their position for them. And oftentimes, it's not just about the investment advice. 
It's the planning aspect of it, looking at taxes, looking at health care, looking at all those things I talked about. Have your goals changed? Does your advisor know that? The last time you had a face-to-face with them was five years ago. I would imagine your goals have changed. And although they may be keeping you up to date with reports and things they're sending you in the mail, maybe a phone call every now and then, but if your goals have changed and they don't know it, they really can't make adjustments for it. But that's something that should be initiated by the advisor. An advisor should be checking in, should be arranging those regular meetings and see what's happened. You know, have you left an employer? Do you have a 401k now that you need to do something with? There's a lot of things that happen over time. If you're going to retire in the next couple of years, this is huge. You know, saving and investing is one thing, but it's what you do with that money. It's having a retirement income strategy. And a retirement income strategy is different than a growth strategy. In one of my shows, I talked about the retirement mountain. We have the ascent, which is accumulation stage. Then you have the descent, which is when you're coming down off the mountain. That's the uh, distribution stage. Well, those are two separate phases of a retirement. If you're managing your money the same way in both, you're going to have some problems. You're going to have some problems because as I highlighted in that show, most of the deaths on places like Everest come on the way down, not on the way up. You know, on the way down, you're trying to make things last. You've used your energy reserves. You're now trying to manage it. And that's why so many deaths happen on the way down. And so don't let that be uh, something that happens to your retirement. What's your plan for Social Security, for Medicare, for taxes, for income, for health care? Do you know what you're going to do for these? Have you had those discussions? You know, our five-step retirement action plan focuses on the five important things that can help you make the most out of every dollar you've saved for retirement, including some of the great opportunities in this new tax plan. So you got to get the most out of Social Security. You got to make sure that you got the right Medicare plan, you know, that taxes aren't killing you in that area. You got to make sure your money lasts as long as you do. Well, as I mentioned, if you would like to find out about our five-step retirement action plan, have a free consultation to discuss how these affect you and do you have a plan for them, just give us a call, 844-343-6048. There's no cost, no obligation, no sales pitch, and no products for sale. Folks, this is just something I do for my radio listeners as a service. Just give us a call, 844-343-6048, and we'll be happy to give you that free consultation. Thanks for listening to our show today. In retirement, you only get one chance to get it right. And we know that proper information leads to informed decisions. And that's why we hold free informational workshops in our area every month. Topics like Social Security, RMDs, the latest retirement tax strategies, IRAs, estate planning, and so much more. For dates and times of the next free workshop in your area, just pick up the phone. Give us a call today. Call 844-343-6048. That's 844-343-6048. You remember that old game you used to play at kids' parties? You know, the one where they play the record, and then all of a sudden, whoop, the record stops. And you got to scrounge for a chair and they always make to where there's one less chair than everybody there. And then one person has to get out of the game and go sit down. And then everybody else starts circling the remaining chairs. And so everybody's wanting to make sure that when the music stops, they're not left without a chair. Are you kind of feeling that way about your retirement with the market, the way it's done the last, oh, six, eight weeks? Well, if you're within five years of retirement, you need to listen to this show because we're going to address specific things to make sure you're not left standing without a chair when the music stops. And, you know, so many of those games as kids were so much fun, but, you know, you were stressed out. You didn't want to be the one left standing, but, you know, ultimately there's only going to be one person left and they were going to be the winner. Well, you know, retirement doesn't have to be that way. There doesn't have to be only one winner. 
But the sad fact of the matter is when you look at statistics that only about five people out of a hundred are truly financially independent when they retire. You know, when you think about the great opportunities in this country and people work so hard, we're probably the hardest working people in the world. And I wouldn't doubt that a bit. We put in longer hours than the rest of the world. You know, they have riots over in France for more vacation. So we've got to look at things for our retirement differently now. You know, we're coming out of a long bull market and the market cycles. And anybody who's come in to see me, you know, I speak a lot on market history and trends and cycles. And I think that's important to look at because when you retire in a cycle is really going to drive some of the things you do. But today I want to talk about 10 steps you need to take before you retire. And especially if you're within five years of retiring, because if you look at retirement, like climbing a mountain, you know, that climb up the mountain, that's your accumulation phase. And I like to use this analogy because I think it's quite descriptive. So you're working, you're putting money away, you know, you're doing all the right things, putting in your 401k, building up your social security, all these things. And you get to the peak of the mountain and that peak of the mountain, that's your retirement. You've gotten to that pinnacle where you've, you've had a lifetime of hard work. You've raised your kids, hopefully paid off your house done some great things, maybe sent the kids to college. Now they're, they've got their families and, and they're doing good and you're proud of them. And you're right at that pinnacle now and retirement starts. Well, you've now gone from the accumulation phase to the distribution phase of retirement. And you know what, folks? All the rules changed. As much as you hate to think about that, the rules have changed. Your income is going to be dependent on what you do with what you've accumulated to this point in your life. Yes, you got Social Security, and maybe you're lucky enough to have a pension. But making sure you take care of what you've accumulated in that nest egg is very, very important. And I often cite the fact that there's a stage in the middle there that's often overlooked. We got the accumulation stage and the distribution phase, climbing up the mountain, going down the mountain. But there's a preservation phase during that transition that a lot of people forget about. That's when you start de-risking your portfolio. That's when you start changing your focus from growth to income. And in fact, that's what my practice focuses on is income-oriented investments and looking at How do you create the streams of income that give you the flexibility to do the things you want to do in life? And so we're going to talk about those things today, and we're going to cover a lot of things that I think you'll find interesting and hopefully informative that will help you in that transition period, that preservation period where you're making the decisions into retirement to make that retirement much more stress-free and happy. So when we come back, we're going to talk about that. You know, Americans are notorious for overspending when the holiday season rolls around. And while that may be good for the economy, in the short term, it often ends up being bad for household budgets. Overindulging a bit on spending during the holiday season doesn't need to create hardships as long as you know your broader financial situation is in good shape. That's why we've created a holiday gift for you. It's our year-end financial planning checklist, and it's absolutely free. Key items on this financial checklist include taxes, charitable donations, estate planning, health insurance, your risk assessment, goals, and so much more. It's our holiday gift to you, your very own year-end financial planning checklist, and it's absolutely free. So call now, 844-343-6048. That's 844-343-6048. All right. Now, when we open, you know, I spent some time talking about the retirement mountain and, you know, the accumulation phase, the distribution phase. 
but the preservation phase. But as we look at 10 steps to take before you retire, I think the number one is what does retirement mean to you? I mean, what do you truly want to do in retirement? You don't want to just go away. You want to be productive. Now, a lot of people, I've got clients that continue to do consulting. They may work part-time at their job. There's a lot of highly skilled people in this town and got a lot of them as my clients who are in high demand and they can control their hours. And that's good if you start positioning yourself in that way. Now, some people aren't that way. It's, you know, they're either working or they're not. You might find a part-time job. You might find a way to begin turning your hobby into something that will, you know, that will generate income for you. So that number one thing is what do you want your retirement to be? Is it about spending time with your family? Is it about spending time with your spouse, maybe traveling? And one caution I would say, I've got one client that really worked hard to make sure that they had plenty in retirement, that him and his wife had plenty in retirement. And then right as he finally got to it, he put it off several times, his wife got sick and they never got to enjoy it. So when you're preparing for retirement, don't overdo it, you know, Look at what you need, but don't think you got to over pad it and end up missing some of the things you've worked for so hard in your life. Because I think that's something he really regrets is that, you know, he wanted to be so secure that he gave up something he'll never get back. So I think the second thing, make sure you have an emergency fund because you don't know what's going to happen. And an emergency fund can encompass many things. What I'm finding more and more is that a lot of my clients are taking care of grandkids or maybe their kids in one way or another. And maybe their kids haven't done a good job and they're handling their grandkids or, you know, something happened in their lives where they're not there. So, you know, having the money to do that as well as doing what you want to do in retirement is important. But I think it all goes back to the first one, which, you know, determine what retirement means to you what family needs you're going to have, what financial needs those are going to put on you. The third thing would be if you're thinking about staying in your house and you still have a mortgage and you're wondering, hey, maybe now might be a good time to refinance if you haven't already done so, or maybe you want to change the financing that you're doing, you do it before you quit working. You know, I think with interest rates going up, a lot of people probably already refinanced, but Just make sure that, you know, if you're going to do that, that uh, you want to do that now. And number four, and I think this is probably the most important, is you want a detailed financial plan. And that should encompass Social Security. When should you take it? When should your spouse take it? What are the ramifications of those decisions? How you should take your pension if you have a pension? Do you need a survivor benefit? Does that make sense to get that? Where's your income going to come from? Are you going to be taking uh, income from your portfolio? Have you readjusted your portfolio to be providing income to you and not just growth? Because when we get back, I'm going to talk about the difference between a growth advisor and an income advisor. So stay tuned, folks. At Brad Williams Financial Services, we believe in innovative thinking, and we're not afraid to challenge conventional methods in our approach to managing, investing, and preserving wealth. To learn more about Brad Williams Financial Services or to set up a complimentary review, call 844-343-6048. That's 844-343-6048. All right. Welcome back. And, you know, right before the break, what I talked about was having a full financial plan and looking at Social Security, looking at your pensions, looking at where you're going to be getting your income, but also addressing your portfolio, because you've got to be able to know what your portfolio is going to do for you. You know, many advisors today are really just financial salespeople. You come in the office, you do a profile, takes you you know, 10 minutes to do the profile and it says either you're, you know, conservative, moderate or aggressive. 
And then they have a cookie cutter set of funds for each one, wherever you fall in and you transfer the money in the next day, it's all invested in whatever those funds are. I would say you probably got a financial salesperson. And as I mentioned mountain climbing in the beginning, you know, when people climb Everest, for example, and and let me give you a detail about Everest. The majority of all deaths on mountains like Everest don't happen on the ascent. They happen on the descent. It's not going up the mountain. In our uh, discussion today, that's the accumulation phase. It's the coming down the mountain, the distribution phase. That's when people make mistakes. You know, their resources have been exhausted. They're tired. Maybe they're injured, you know, kind of like a retirement could be. And they start making mistakes and it oftentimes costs them their lives. So a lot of people, in fact, I think on Mount Everest, you have to have a Sherpa to go up with you. They hire a Sherpa who is that guide that knows the ins and outs of the mountain. And he guides them up and he guides them down. And that's the key. He guides them up and he guides them down. Unfortunately, in our industry, you typically specialize in one or the other. You're either a growth oriented advisor, you know, you have clients that are, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, maybe even older. And your main goal is growing their money. And when people start talking about, you know, should I get more conservative? Well, they say, yeah, we'll get in more conservative stocks and they're still in the market and there's a universe of income-oriented investments that a lot of people don't look at that are largely unavailable in mutual funds, and those are worth looking at. And so that Sherpa should be able to take you there and have those in the portfolio. But again, so many advisors are financial salespeople, and they're not Sherpas, and their expertise is not making sure that you don't run out of money. And when I say that, I'm not talking about putting your money in a variable annuity that has an income rider and in the event that all your money's gone, you still have income. That's not what I'm talking about. Variable annuities can be very expensive. And although those income riders sound pretty good, it's kind of like a variable annuity is a tool that can be valuable in the right hands and, and for the right reasons. But when you're a retiree, it may not be the best choice. And of course, That's something to be determined by your particular situation. So I'm not going to make a blanket statement on that. But think about this. So variable annuity gives you access to the market through the sub accounts and you have growth in there. Well, you also have what could be a lot of high fees. But what often happens with a financial salesperson is when you come in and they're used to using these variable annuities, they say, you know, I'm concerned about the downside. Oh, okay. Well, we can just throw this income rider on that way. Uh, If for some reason the market goes down, you'll at least be guaranteed this certain amount of income when you retire. So you'll have some safety there. Okay. Well, it might work for some, but you know, when you really look at the details, a lot of people find that may not be for them. It's kind of like going to a Porsche dealership. When you're looking for a family vehicle, you know, a crossover or minivan or something like that, and you go in the Porsche dealership and you say, Hey, I need a vehicle. He says, Hey, we got this great sports car. Well, you know, I'm going to be driving a lot in the snow. Oh, okay. Well, for an extra charge, we can put these snow tires in the trunk and they'll be ready for you. Okay. Well, you know, that might work. He said, but I I may be going over some rough ground and all, and I'm afraid it might roll over. Oh, okay. Well, for this extra fee, we can throw a roll bar on there. And then if you roll over, you're going to be all right. Okay. Well, so what have you got? You've taken a sports car. And you've added on these things that really didn't belong, and they're supposed to make you feel safe, when in reality, maybe another vehicle might be the best thing. If you're worried about losing your money, there may be other ways, because a variable annuity is going to be just like the market. It's going to have ups and downs. So when you're looking at income tools, what I'm talking about is not really a variable annuity with an income provider. I'm talking about other things. These are a universe of income-oriented investments that I help my clients with. Now, if you're not sure whether your portfolio is set up for income in retirement and that you're in that preservation phase, that five-year period before retirement, you need to give me a call, 844-343-6048. That's 
343-643-6048. And we can talk about your thoughts and even provide you a free one-hour consultation to do a brief analysis and show you, are you on track or not? It's 844-343-6048. So getting back to a detailed retirement plan, I think that's important. And that's one of the things that I work with my clients on is creating a kind of a financial GPS, I like to call it. Because when you look at traveling, and and I've used this analogy on my show before, when you're flying, most of the time that plane's off course and you pilots out there know what I'm talking about. And that GPS figures out, you know, the turbulence, the tailwinds, the cross currents, uh, you know, the weather changes, and it makes sure that when you drift off course, it pulls that nose right back on course. So it's making the small course corrections when they're needed instead of waiting until they get to be big ones. And oftentimes when people come in to see me the first time, maybe they had an advisor they haven't seen in two or three, five years, put them in some investments that they're not even sure how they're doing, not even sure whether they're appropriate for them. Maybe they get a Christmas card every now and then, but to sit down and do a several reviews a year and make sure they're on course and make the subtle course correction, that may not be the kind of service they're getting. And if that's the case, then that might indicate that you're dealing with a financial salesperson and not so much an advisor. So having a detailed financial plan is important. And number six, part of that plan is your savings drawdown strategy. You want to make sure that you build plans in there to make it last. Because, you know, A good analogy for that would be if you don't plan right with your investments, your retirement could be like a 30-year mortgage. I know my grandfather actually had more years than that in retirement, but you think about that. You buy a house, you get a mortgage, you get a 30-year mortgage, and then you make that first payment and very little of the principal's paid, most of its interest. All right. And then each time you make another payment, just a little bit more principal's paid. And then when you finally get to the end of it, at the end of 30 years, lo and behold, that $300,000 debt that you had 30 years ago is gone. And hey, that's great. You got your deed and you're in retirement. House is paid off. That's great. Now, the problem a lot of people have is when they look at drawdown strategies and this, I'm going to do a show on the 4% rule that I think has a lot of holes in it because even Morningstar has changed that to 2.8% in this turbulent environment. And what that means is that there used to be an old adage, if you have a million dollars, you can draw 4% out of it. And that's 40 grand a year before taxes. And you got a reasonable chance, you know, something like 90% chance of not running out of money before you die. That's changed now with the way the markets and interest rates are. And even Morningstar has recently come out and says 2.8. So think about that, 2.8%. But getting back to the mortgage analogy, You had a 30-year mortgage, you paid it off, but what if you're taking your income from growth and you're slowly drawing down your principal? Well, it ends up being like a 30-year mortgage in reverse if you haven't planned it right. And then boom, you get toward the end of your retirement and there's no money left. But then again, look at where we are now in the market. What if, and we've had one in 2000 and one in 2008, 50% drawdown. That changes that whole withdrawal rate totally. So uh, think about that. And when we get back, we're going to talk a little bit more about the uh, 10 steps you need to take before you retire. Thanks for listening to our show today. In retirement, you only get one chance to get it right. And we know that proper information leads to informed decisions. And that's why we hold free informational workshops in our area every month. Topics like Social Security, RMDs, the latest retirement tax strategies, IRAs, estate planning, and so much more. For dates and times of the next free workshop in your area, just pick up the phone. Give us a call today. Call 844 844- Three four three six zero four eight. That's eight four four three four three six zero four eight. All right, now 
going back, you know, we've talked about climbing the retirement mountain. We've talked about having a financial plan. We've talked about income strategies and why, you know, you don't want to turn your retirement into a a 30 year mortgage in reverse and why that's something you got to look at. Uh, Number seven is you may want to look at long term care insurance or long term care coverage in one of numerous ways it's available. I've done shows on long-term care. You can go back, go to the AskBradShow.com and listen to those. I, I don't want to spend this time going over that. But planning for health care expenses is very important, and I think it's, it's something you want to do. I've also done some shows on estate planning. A lot of my clients have used a, a great law firm that that's what they specialize in, to put together trusts and wills and powers of attorneys and why those are necessary. You know, putting together that part of your plan is really important, too. Number nine, you need to check and recheck your plans. And what I mean by that is a plan is something that changes with the environment. There's an old military adage that no battle plan survives first contact. You know, you might say that about retirements too, because things change. You know, if you retired in 2009, you had an upward market for a good while. If you're retiring now, you may not be so sure what it's going to do. But having a written plan going back to number five is really critical. And what I mean by written plan is not just a general outline. I'm talking about something that details everything. And if that's something you want to talk about, if you don't have a written plan, if you feel like you've been dealing with a a financial salesperson and not a financial advisor, and you're looking for a retirement Sherpa, then Give us a call, 844-343-6048. That's 844-343-6048. Now, we're going to go into the last one, the 10th step that you need to take in retirement. And that is you need to adjust your retirement financial plan to compensate for risk and longevity. And so that's where we get back into, are you investing for growth? Are you investing for income? Because the the formula I write on the board in my office all the time when I'm meeting with clients, just to remind them is TR equals G plus I, total return equals growth plus income. And a lot of people, when they think income, they think, okay, well, I got some bond funds in there. That's good for income. Well, bond funds, probably not going to be the best place going forward because we've come out of a uh, period of low interest rates, of declining interest rates, and now we're heading back into a period of increasing interest rates. And during those periods, the value of that bond, when you buy an individual bond and you hold it to maturity, then the only risk is that you're not getting as much return as other people are getting. But when you get to the end of it, you get your money back. When you buy a bond in a bond fund, and unfortunately, a lot of financial salespeople, when they, you know, they get that stock bond portfolio mix, they use bond funds. When we're in a period of rising interest rates, bond funds can lose value because the value of the bond goes down as interest rates go up. So if somebody has a 3% bond and the new bonds are, are five and they want to sell that bond early, then they're going to take a loss on that bond because other people can get a comparable bond for a higher interest rate. Well, that value of that bond is calculated in that bond fund. So uh, that's a discussion that if you're heavily into bond funds, we may want to have. If you're not sure about how to position yourself for income and how you should be defensive in your portfolio going in retirement, call 844-343-6048. That's 844-343-6048. Four, eight. We can set up a one-hour consultation. We can even set up a 15-minute phone consultation. Just give us a call, 844-343-6048. That's all the time we have for today. To learn more about Brad Williams Financial Services or to set up a complimentary review, call 844-343-6048. 
That's 844-343-6048. Investment advisory services offered through Sound Income Strategies, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Grant Williams Financial Services and Sound Income Strategies, LLC are not associated entities.